Uh, book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts, chapter 16, and we're going to begin reading in verse 20. Acts, chapter 16, in verse 20. The Bible says, And brought them, uh, speaking of Paul and Silas, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, and commanded to beat them, and when they laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in stock. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for all your goodness and your watch care to our home, to our family, and to our church. We pray this evening that you would bless and honor your word. God, uh, speak it to the people that are here today. Uh, save the lost according to your mercy and grace, we pray it. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, very familiar verses of Scripture. But what I'll be preaching on tonight is waiting in the dark. Now, uh, it's a dark time to live. And if you look at our situation globally, yeah. it, we're in a mess. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know all these things must come to pass. Uh, that's what the Bible says. But it doesn't make them enjoyable. When you're thinking about your children and grandchildren and the next 10 years that lie in front of them it doesn't make it pleasant the darkness is coming the only thing that we can really have with the darkness at hand is the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. your only hope and your only blessing will be in a true relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that is what you will need in the days ahead. The darkness is coming. Uh, go back with me, if you will, to verse 12. Back to verse 12, and we'll kind of set the stage when Paul and Silas was thrown into the inner prison and what that brought that to pass. In verse 12, the Bible says, and from thence to Philippi. And now, that means that they were... Uh, on a missionary journey, they stopped, I think, at Caesarea, and then their next stop on the missionary journey was at Philippi. Now, wherever you go to preach the gospel, opposition will arrive. You can depend on that. If all you're doing is handing out Bibles on the, on the, at the red light in Dover, anticipate opposition because it will come. It will be part of your ministry. Jared, you're getting a piece of that. That's just part of the ministry is the opposition that comes with it. And so I want you to see the good thing first. What do we know of the ministry at Philippi? A church came from it. We have a letter to the church at the Philippi or the Philippian letter. Uh, it was successful. It, it was something that became effectual, something that God blessed in a great way, but it came at a price. Every ministry that we ensue as one of the Lord's true churches, listen, it comes at a price. It, and, you know, we immediately think uh, monetarily when we think of price, but that, that, that's just skimming the surface of what the price of ministry is, the, the price of giving something of yourself. And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. Now, I want you to notice two things, that uh, this was a mixed city, and the Romans called it a colony because they had possession of it, and, and they were the government in control but there were Jews there as well, and we'll, we'll see that in just a moment. 
but it also was a very large city. Uh, you know, uh, all of us growing up and being raised in, in this area, uh, we're a little fearful of large cities, aren't we? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, I think uh, uh, when Paul was considering going to Rome, he, he, he said, I have much people there. Uh, meaning there were a lot of elect in that place. You know, we don't need to be wary of an area just because it's large or just because it's small. Uh, what we need is the leadership of the Lord. Uh, you know, we're, we finished a mission work as New Testament Baptist Church, and who knows, it may be just time uh, to, to, cast a, to, to cast another net, uh, to find another place. And, and, and so we find that they found the mind of God, and they got in the will of God, and they did what the Lord did them to do. And they arrived in Macedonia, verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was walked to be made. Now, if you are going to be successful in any Christian effort, including surviving the last days, remember this, prayer is essential. If you don't have a good prayer life, you will fall. I will guarantee you that if things that are in, interrupting your prayer life, and every one of us has that, every one of us has uh, daily obligations, daily troubles and trials that hinder our prayer life, and if you don't have a good prayer life, get ready to fall on your face. But better than that would be improve your prayer life. Improve your prayer life. And, and so... In this missionary effort, the very first thing they do is go before God in prayer, where, pro where prayer was walked to be made, demanded, necessary, needful. And so they went out and did it. Now notice what it says in the rest of that verse. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. Now there is never a time where witnessing is not appropriate. They were out there. These women were out there, whatever. I, I've heard different ideas on this. Some people say they were watching. I don't believe that because it was the Sabbath. Uh, I believe, you know, maybe they were just out there enjoying the evening before the evening prayer time. I don't know why they were there, but there was a group there, and Paul attached himself to them and began speaking of the things of Christ. Verse 14, y'all all know one of my favorites, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Now, two things there. I want you to see that she was religious, but she wasn't saved. I often wonder how many people operate the entirety of their life in the very same situation, religious, but not saved. And I've known people like that for years. My own son, very recently, the Lord saved him. And you know what? Uh, Matthew was a good boy. He, uh, he, he was uh, most of the time easy to manage. Seemingly like uh, he and I had more conflicts, and Don and Adam had more conflicts, and Donna could deal with Matthew, and I dealt with Adam. Just kind of lo the logistics of our family. But both of them were generally good boys. But that didn't make them redeemed. Uh, you know what? You can be a good moral person and split hell wide open. And we need to remember that deception is easy. Deception happens every day. And, and, and so we find that Lydia, uh, the Bible says here, the Lord opened her heart. She was saved. She had fruits, meat for repentance. She just it required them, begged them to stay in her house. Let her put the missionary up. And they did it. They, they let her finance the trip, as the saying goes. And now they had a base of operation there in the city of Philippi. Verse uh, 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, 
Again, that's the second time prayer is mentioned in this text, if you want to be a successful missionary. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination or divining uh, met us and brought her which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, uh, the reality of divining things, uh, we want to say that doesn't exist. Uh, it does. Witchcraft is very, very real. Though Those things do happen, but they don't happen by the move of the Almighty. They happen by the move of the other side. They happen by the move of Satan and his fallen angels. It is a reality. And she used this to make money for her people. It says uh, by soothsaying or fortune telling, saying this is what will happen next. You know, every time I read this, I think of my mother and my dad. And one time, Mama told me that her and her girlfriend Hazel, that when they lived in Nashville, went to a carnival. And she said, the fortune teller told me she was dating a different guy named James, not dad, different guy. And uh, she said, he said I'd bury a man named James, or she did, it was a woman. And I said, well, you see how that worked out. She didn't think it was funny. Uh, and, uh, but you know what I'm saying? There's genuinality to that. It doesn't come from God, but there's a reality behind that mess. And, and, and so we find that this woman had spiritual knowledge in the other side of the camp. All demons do. Remember when uh, they were uh, when the Lord Jesus ca cast out legion. Uh, what have we to do with thee, the Son of the Most High God? He knew exactly who he was immediately, like that. So they have a spiritual understanding that often exceeds ours, and this woman did too. Verse 17, and the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These God, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. She understood spiritual things. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now, two things have happened now in the spiritual realm. Number one, an individual was saved. And number two, uh, he, he's, uh, Paul, as an apostle, had the ability to cast out demons, and he did that. Now, when spiritual things began to happen, you watch out, Satan's on his way. He, he's going to be in the opposition. He's going to be there uh, hindering all he can. He's going to use everything at his disposal to stop what's going on. But blessed be the name of the Lord. You know what? There still came a church at Philippi, despite all the opposition, despite everything the devil could come up with, a church at Philippi happened. He's no match for our God. He is no match for the God we serve. And so I want you to see uh, success in ministry, and you're six, about to see, comes with a price. Verse 19. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas, drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them to the magistrates, saying... These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Uh, they weren't excited. They were upset. You, you know what happens when demons are cast out? Lost people get upset. Uh, you know what? Uh, when demons are cast out, Satan gets on the move. He's, he's not glad. He's not happy. He's upset. And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, they took them right into the court of law. Now, my guess is on a regular day, they could care less what the magistrates were doing as long as they was getting their dollar or two. But on this occasion, because it interfered with their money, 
Oh, let's take them to the law. And that's exactly what they did. Verse 22, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. This is for preaching the gospel. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the inner prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Now, you know, it had to be a time of victory, at least two victories, seeing Lydia saved and then seeing her behave as a saved woman and saying, listen, come into my house, I'll cook for you, I'll clean for you, you'll have a comfortable place to sleep. God did a great thing. That demonic possessed woman, the demons were cast out, illustrating our God's ability over all spiritual divination. And then the devil gets on the move. Uh, they weren't patted on the back. They were beat on the back. They, they weren't encouraged in the Lord. They were beat nearly to death. Darkness is coming. We've been sitting here for about, what, 30 minutes? And darkness fell while we sat here. Darkness is coming. Things are not going to get better. According to the scriptures, the Bible says, and they will wax worse and worse. You know what? We think Biden is bad, right? You ain't seen nothing yet. Things are going to wax worse and worse. Uh, it's not going to improve in a governmental sense. And, and so darkness is coming. The black time is near. The difficult times are just ahead. That's not a question. The question is this, is what are you going to do? So they were beaten. They were thrown in there. Now, I'm assuming this happened either at 3 or 6 in the evening. There were three prayer times in, in the Jewish culture, one at 9 in the morning, one at 3 in the afternoon, and one at sundown about 6 in the evening. And, and they had those prayer times every, every day. So one or two, two times it probably happened, three in the afternoon or six at night. Now, we have nine hours or six hours, depending on which prayer time it was, that are missing. And it was a dark, dark time. Now, the Bible says they were thrust into the inner prison. Now, that being so, in, in an inner room, what's missing? Light. Light. There's two back rooms right here. You go in them rooms, shut the door behind you, it's dark as pitch in there. It's very, very dark. Go into the basement right now, don't turn the lights on, and you'll see how dark it is in the inner room. Go to these bathrooms on the ground floor, and it is dark, dark in there. Darkness is coming. It's, it, it, it is, uh, and you know, maybe I'm stupid, and, and probably just the way I was raised. Uh, I remember when we got a yard light, and I thought we were uptown. I mean, when I was a little boy, when the lights went out, it was dark, dark. <laughs> and I uh, didn't think much about it. But you know, when you begin to grope around in an unfamiliar area, darkness is a little scary, isn't it? Uh, you can't really uh, see what's going on. And when you touch something, it may be, feel familiar, and it may not, and you're not sure where you're at. Darkness is coming. It's reality. Now, go with me to Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. And uh, we're going to begin reading in verse 21. Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. During the plagues against uh, Egypt, uh, Moses was the mediator. Moses was the conductor. Moses was in charge. And notice what it says. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward the heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want you to see that God gave a 
a command of Moses that was really against Moses' nature. Moses was a very kind man. Moses was a very good man. Even when they were rebelling against him, Moses went to bat for the children of Israel. He says, Lord, don't destroy them. Uh, uh, they'll say that you brought them out here in the desert to kill them. Don't do that. He intercede. But now the enemy of God is there, and he knew them too. He grew up in the king's house. And he's asked to bring darkness on people. Now, um, and remember in God's sovereignty, in this situation, who is bringing the darkness? God. It's no accident that any of these things that are occurring is occurring. Now, uh, there was a brother preaching up there uh, uh, this uh uh, at this conference, uh, Brother Mark Step or Matt Step, excuse me, Brother Matthew Step, and he pointed out something last night in his preaching that I, I personally did not know. Maybe y'all do, uh, but that there was a dam built by the Chinese on the river of Euphrates. That at a moment's notice they can close the gates. Euphrates River will dry up at the nation of Israel, and people can go across dry shod to attack the nation of Israel. That's been in place since 1970, the majority of my life. Darkness is coming. Darkness is a reality that we're going to have to face. Uh, now, you know the rest of the story here. It said even a darkness that could be felt, it said that it paralyzed them in the sense no one even moved night or day for three days and three nights, they sat still. They were encapsulated in this darkness and couldn't even move in their own houses. But the Bible says in the rest of this, but there was light in the houses of the children of Israel. So you know how you're going to make it in this situation? There's going to be light in your house. There, there, there's going to be something that you can depend on. There's going to be something that you can uh, grasp to. There's going to be some light Amen. for God's people, mm -hmm. for the Lord's people, not for anybody else. And so we see that literally the darkness fell upon the people of Egypt, and it was so severe it could be felt. You know what? I can feel the darkness today. Can you? Mm. I can uh, listen, keep your eye on Poland. There's going to be some dark, dark time for those people. They're, they will fall next. Uh, here in our own country, homosexual marriage is applauded. It's a dark, dark time. Uh, kindergarten, you know, when I was a kid, we had eight grades and there was like five teachers, so very small school, public school. Now they have the school K through three and uh, fairly big schools. You know uh, what's on the curriculum? Sex education. A little fellow like this. It's a dark, dark time. Get your kids out of that mess. Do something different. It's a dark time. And, and so we see that uh, certainly in uh, 2022, it's much, much more dark now than the days when in Acts, huh, we see these things happen to them. Now, if you will, go with me to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. We're going to read just a few verses here and, and bring this situation to the New Testament. Uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, uh, beginning in verse 19. Luke, chapter 7, beginning in verse 19. The Bible says, And John, calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them, saying to Jesus, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? Now, why is that so significant? What does he say in John 1, 
or John 2 right along in there. Well, what is John's proclamation to his people as he's baptizing them? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And now he's saying, all right, you two go up there and ask Jesus if he's the one. What happened? Yeah. Darkness came. Yeah. You know what? Have you ever questioned your salvation? Have you ever questioned, hey, is this really the church the Lord would have me in? Is this even the true church? Now, if you've not questioned that, you're probably telling me a story. And you know why you question that? Darkness is coming. Darkness is here. And, and, and so we find that in this time that John being overtaken with being locked up, he was going to lose his head. He was in dire straits. He began to, he began to be grievous. Darkness had You know what? Every one of us are just going to have darkness. Now, you think about at this time, what about the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ? They were rejoicing. They, they were thrilled. And you know why? Because darkness hadn't fallen on them. It was falling on John. But it hadn't fell on them yet. In other words, darkness can be you right now and me tomorrow. Darkness is coming. Yeah. And, and so we find that John the Baptist is going through this thing and, and his faith is wavering and, and he, he sends him over. He, he sends his people over there and says, just ask him if he's the one. Now verse 20, uh, the Bible says, and uh, when the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist have sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities, and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, uh, to uh, the dead are uh, the dead are raised to the poor, meaning the Jew Gentiles to the poor. The gospel is given, and blessed is he whoso whosoever shall not be offended at me. Now I believe when them boys got back. And they, and they told John this, the light came back on. Oh, yeah. Now I remember exactly who he is. Yeah. And I believe that so strongly when, when head chopping day came, he was like, is this here where you want it? See, you've gotten through the darkness. We can get through the darkness by the help of the Almighty. By the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can walk through the darkness and come out fine. But we have to depend on it. We, we, we have to know that he's there. We have to be diligently searching his word. You know, I, I preach the entirety of my ministry, study this book. And you know what? It may well be that one day you won't have the pleasure to have one. You know what? You, do you know how hated this book is? And you know what? The, the new versions aren't hated. And the reason why is because they don't tell the truth that this book does. Right. A lot of times when it says men and women, new translations will just simply say persons. <laughs> well, you know what? There's a lot of difference between a man and a woman, ain't it? Uh, I would like to know which gender they're addressing, wouldn't you? And so we find in, in, in this book the reason it's to be treasured is because it, just one reason. One, it's the very living word of God. The other, way, the other one is this. You may not always have it. So cherish it. Love it. Study, study, study. Darkness is coming. Last place I want to read in Revelation chapter 2. 
In Revelation chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading in verse 8, uh, the Lord's church letters, uh, writing to the church of Smyrna. The Bible says this, And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, defeating death in his own ministry. This is what he is saying to that church. I know thy works. Y'all remember that? He doesn't just know New Testament works. He knows your works. Now, I know thy works and thy tribulation and thy poverty. Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, you know, uh, there's not as many of us as there used to be, right? right? We could view that as tribulation, could we not? The faithful few, as the old saying goes. If it is, so be it, right? If another person never walks through that door, so be it. See, tribulations uh, are going to come. Darkness is coming. Yeah. The, that's not the question. The question is how you're going to deal with it. Yeah. How we as a group, as a, as a united group of believers, as a church, how are we going to deal with it? How are we going to address it together collectively? That's the real question. Not yet, but how? What are we going to do? And so the Lord Jesus recognized it, knew that this great, wonderful church of Smyrna had had a really hard time of it. He says, I know your tribulation and your poverty. You ever thought how the Smyrna letter, how different it is from the church of Laodicea? What did Laodicea see of themselves? We are rich. We have need of nothing. And you know what? I bet they had a lot of money in, in, in their treasury, don't you? But they had nothing, nothing within the people. But this church did. They were, in other words, churches don't just get in this situation by being a bad church. In fact, I think the contrary is true. They get there by being a good church. That's how the tribulations arrive. That's how they come. And so he says, I know your situation. You're, you're poor. Y'all don't have much money. But notice what he says in those parentheses. But thou art rich. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yeah. You know why they were rich? They were rich in the word of God. They were rich in the, ple the, the presence of the most holy. They were rich. No stress about that, is it? If we're following uh, the, uh, the Word of God and we're having His presence, we're rich. We're wealthy. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, I want you to notice two things. This Messianic Jew thing has mushroomed in the last 25 years. You know what? They're saying they're Jews, and they are not, <laughs> right? They, they follow the feast. I know a lot of them. Very nice people. They're not Jews. I'm not a Jew. You know what? I would think it would be even insulting to the Almighty that a non-Jew celebrate those, the feast of the Passover. <clears throat> what do you think? If they want to be Jews, they need to go to Jerusalem and deny the name of Christ, right? <laughs> That's what Jews do, is it not? Yeah. And, and, and so we see that these individuals <laughs> uh, were having a rough, rough time of it. So they had these people that were saying they were Jews and not. And then the Lord Jesus goes on to say even further, they're actually of the synagogue of the church of Satan. 
Now, you be very cautious, and I think, I'm not sure which one it was, but say it, uh, one of the preachers was talking about this being in Louisville, Kentucky. Y'all, that's not but four hours from here. I've been through Louisville a million times. First Church of Satan, Louisville, Kentucky. Mm. Now, they may worship the devil. I don't know what goes on over there. But <laughs> these people were claiming to be Jews, claiming to know Christ. And the Lord God said, or the Lord Jesus said, the synagogue of Satan. So you don't have to have that over to the door to be just that, does it? And to be exactly a worshiper of the enemy of God and... <laughs> And saying that, living that as a people. And so he says, I know who they are. Verse 10, fear none of these things. Now, how many of you are scared of the dark? My little girl, actually honest about it. Uh, she lived on the, the light in the hall, the light in the bathroom down the hall. And the, light, and the laundry room light, her light, and the little light up in her bedroom. Uh, and I cannot sleep in the light. Me and Donna got one of those motion things, and when the cat runs by, the light in my whole room lights up. Uh, and uh, I just can't do that. But I want you to see the real reason Bella's not scared of the dark, per se. Her fear drives her in that direction, right? Fear of the unknown. You want to be ready for the dark? Fear not. Make an informed decision. I'm telling you tonight, it's going to be a difficult, difficult, hard time. And if I give you that fair warning, don't be afraid. All right, well, Larry told me, so uh, I knew it was coming. Be informed. Be aware. Watch the news. Understand what's transpiring in the Middle East. Listen, it's coming. Fear not. Fear not. Fear none of these things, excuse me, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Not made that you are going to suffer. Don't be fearful of those. Don't be upset about those. Don't be scared of those. They're coming. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And you may be tried. <laughs> I like that, and you may be tried. You know what that says to me? <laughs> some of us won't even get that. <laughs> Just no. throw it in there and you're guilty. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we really cherish those rights as American citizens. You know what? It don't take that and they're gone and you won't even be, get a fair trial. Jesus didn't, did he? Oh. And, and, and so we see that he's telling the church at Smyrna, <laughs> it's going to be so bad, you may not even get a fair trial. And ye shall have, again, the guarantee, the promise, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Now, very frequently, you could take that verse out of context, and I've heard uh, well, probably well-meaning, not Baptists, but other type of preachers saying, well, see, if you're not faithful unto death, you're going to, die, you're going to go to hell. But he says, be thou faithful unto death. And what's the rest of that statement? And thou shalt receive a crown of life. Not eternal life, a crown of life. You know what? Sometimes I think about my crown, and it'll probably be rusty and made of tin, because that's about the job I've done in the ministry, and about the job I've done at, just as a human being. But if you go through that tribulation, you're going to receive a crown. Yeah. If you if you hang on and keep going, uh, you're going to receive something special to lay at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And it gets hard. This flesh gets in the way so much of the time and you get mad and angry. 
And what we really need to what we really need to be focusing on is the spiritual things. You know, it, it's so much meat in the verse when uh, the Lord Jesus is talking about talking to Nicodemus concerning the new birth. He says this, that which is spiritual is spirit, mm -hmm. and that which is carnal is carnal. Mm -hmm. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is uh, <laughs> spiritual is spiritual. Man, there's a lot there to that, isn't it? We spend a lot of time building up the fleshly man, don't we? And so little time building up the inward man. Yeah. We need to be we need to be spending more time on the inward man, uh, dear friend, because darkness darkness is coming. Yeah. Are you ready for it?